um, so here God means um, uh, this is groups this is for orders and this is for dynamics okay and most of the this first talk will be about this and I will give a lot of uh, open questions because uh, uh, there seems to be many students here some of them were asking for questions so I will give a lot of open questions that I think that are really interesting for the theory but let me just emphasize something so there are many many reasons in mathematics and actually in physics to be interested at this space this is the group of uh, bijections of a manifold that preserves some smooth structure and this smooth structure can be even the continuous structure so this is a space but this is also a group okay and we would like to understand the the topology of this space or maybe the topology is not very very complicated but for instance if you go into this space and you look at the topology of the space of commuting elements in this space this is really very hard to understand. Also, we would like to understand some, uh, what are the group relations that are, that are inside? Mm -hmm. What are all possible uh, group relations for subgroups inside, for finitely generated subgroups inside? Also, uh, whether there is some geometry, some natural geometry on this space, and many, many, many natural things. But this turns out to be a very, a very hard, uh, Question, more than a question, this is a program actually. But today, for the case of, uh, of a one dimensional manifold, not necessarily compact, so I will think about the, the circle or the closed interval or, or the open interval, which is, for most of the cases, this is equal to the real line, but. Uh, well, it is equal to the real line. So uh, there is a very uh, robust theorem uh, today. So most of the questions have been answered. Most of the natural questions have, have been answered. But there are still some, some uh, very nice and very concrete questions which remain open. And that may be interesting to, to, to look at them today. And uh, so I will divide my, my two talks in, in two parts. Because the theory here is really very different when you deal with the, with the continuous category and the, with the smooth category. So now I will just uh, deal with the uh, continuous category. OK? And I will always assume that uh, I preserve the orientation. Otherwise, it is not very hard to understand what happens in general if you understand what happens when you preserve the orientation. So let me start with, with something which is interesting. So for instance, you may ask, what are the subgroups of uh, the group of homeomorphism of the real line? Okay, and this very, very nice question has a very, natural, very nice answer, actually. So the property for a group to be, uh, say, what are the finitely generated subgroup that embed into, into this group of homeomorphism of the real line? So not every group embeds into the group of homeomorphism of the real line. There is an obvious abstraction. So a, 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 a group that embeds here cannot have torsion because if you have a homeomorphism of the real line uh, which is non-trivial then then uh, points move to the right or to the left but whenever a point moves to the right its image moves to the right again and, and again and again and again so it never comes back to the initial position so there cannot be torsion so a group like that is torsion free. But the converse is, is false. So this is 
kind of exercise. So exercise, this is very well known to exist, but build a, 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 a torsion-free group. There are many examples, remarkable examples, actually, such that uh, gamma, such that gamma does not embed into, into home of the real line. OK? But actually, uh, there are many, many, many groups that embed into the group of homeomorphism of the real line. For instance, an example that I like very much, uh, is the following. Uh, well, of course, you have uh, torsion-free abelian groups. Torsion-free nilpotent as well. But there are, there are, in particular, there are free groups here. There are many other examples. Fundamental group of, of closed surfaces, uh, some mapping class groups. Not all mapping class groups, but some mapping class group. In particular, uh, break groups. But I, I, I would like to concentrate on this, because this is really very, very interesting. And why I would like to concentrate on this. So, how do you see that free group act on the on the real line? Well, it is one way to see this is just take two homeomorphisms of the real line somehow at random. So you take two, say, generic homeomorphisms of the real line. So in general, they will generate a free group. Okay. In general, there will be no algebraic relation between them. So generic homeomorphism of the real line will generate uh, a free group. But the point is the following. This is very, very interesting. So there is a, a characterization of, uh, for finite trinity group or for countable groups to be embedded into the group homeomorphism. And this is the answer to this question. So the answer is, well, it is, OK. Maybe, maybe the right word is not an answer, but it is a translation into another language. So a group. A finitely generated group, gamma, embeds in, uh, in homeo of the real line if and only if it satisfies an algebraic property which is being left order of. And left orderable means that there is a, a total order on the group which is invariant by multiplication on the left. So if you have f smaller than g, then h of f is smaller than h of g for every h in gamma. OK? And this equivalence, uh, in general, is referred to as being somehow folklore. I think that the, the first person who, who really noticed this was Charles Holland. But anyway, there might be maybe references uh, prior to Holland. OK, and let me explain why this is true. Well, I will just uh, play one, I, I will just prove one direction. So I will give the idea of one direction. So the other direction may be left a, as an exercise. So one direction is if gamma embeds into homeo, then gamma is left orderable. And one way to order a group is, is the following. You just fix a point x not on the real line, and you declare that f is larger than g if uh, at this point the image of f is larger, are real numbers, than g of x not. OK? This is an order, but the problem is that this order may fail to be total, because it may happen that two elements which are distinct uh, fix a point. OK? So instead of doing this, instead of taking only one point, I will take a sequence of points. 
and I will declare that uh, f is larger than g if uh, this happens or they are equal and uh, for the second point one has the inequality or one has the, the, the equality for the first two points and for the third point one has the corresponding uh, inequality and so on. Okay? And the point now is that if this sequence is dense, this provides a total order on the group because you can uh, compare uh, different homeomorphisms along a dense sequence. And it's very easy to see that this order is invariant on the left because if you have uh, such an inequality, well, this is preserved by, the, by composition by on the left by any homeomorphism of the real line. Okay, so this is one way to see why uh, groups of homeomorphism of the real line are left orderable. It is very interesting that the converse is also true. It may be left uh, as an exercise. But actually, this provides uh, many order relations inside groups, okay? And it, it is quite amazing because if you think directly, for this case, it is very difficult to visualize an order on the free group. Free group has kind of a very simple uh, uh, geometric structure. It's like a tree, OK? But determining, just looking at the tree, what, what elements are bigger than, than the other one, it's very, it's very difficult. So there, actually, there are, there, are, there are many results in, in this direction. So, OK, but, but free groups actually have uh, uh, many left orders. And the first question is, somehow, how many left orders are in the free group? Actually, this is not exactly the question, because we know that there are uncountably many left orders of the free group. OK? And to explain this, uh, let me just say that there is a very nice uh, object that is attached to every left orderable group, at least if it's finitely generated. So I will uh, consider the space of all left orders on gamma. I will put them inside a, a single space. So I will consider all left orders. This is a very uh, natural idea, and, uh, and actually has been revealed very important. Uh, it has led to the solutions of, of important conjectures to look at the whole space of left orders on a group. And what is nice is that, well, for the case of finite linearity group, you can define a natural metric in this space so that it becomes a metric space, OK? You can define, say, that the distance between two orders equals, say, 1 over uh, well, it depends also. The question will also depend on the, on the, on the, on the normalization you will, you will take for this, OK? So I will take 1 over, uh, let me think a little, bit, a little bit, 1 over 2 to the n, maybe, where n, where the two orders coincide uh, on the ball of radius uh, n minus 1, but do not coincide on the ball of radius n. So if I have two orders, at some moment they become different. So I, I look at the first moment where I see that difference. And I keep this number. OK, this is a, a metric. And actually, this, is, this space with this metric is uh, it's, it's a compact matrix space. OK? 
Okay? And another thing which is interesting is that there is a very nice action of gamma on this space, my conjugacy. So I will come back to this later, but it's a nice action by conjugacy, but since the orders are already uh, invariant on the left, actually this is an action on the right. But let me, let me just concentrate on the case of uh, the free. So there is a theorem by, by Linnell that says the following, so, which is not very hard to prove, actually. If you look at, the, at this uh, action, the, 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 the theorem says that the, the space of left orders of a group cannot be infinite and countable. So it's either uh, finite or uncountable. It contains a Cantor set. In, in, in the finite case, we know what should be the group. There is a list of groups for which this space is finite. For instance, the group of the integers has only two orders. You can define that one is, is positive, larger than the identity, or one is negative, smaller than the identity. This is the only thing you can do. There are other groups for which this space is finite. If it is infinite, then it is automatically uncountable. Okay? It's a very nice theorem. And uh, well, when it is uncountable, this is because it contains a Cantor set. And we, we know that Cantor sets are the same up to topological level. They are all homeomorphic. But here we are dealing with a compact metric space, a metric space. And, and, and Cantor sets are not necessarily isometric or by Lipschitz equivalent. So the question is the following. So taking this normalization, or maybe another normalization, try to do explicit computations on this space. So what is the Hausdorff dimension of the space of left orders of the free group in two generators? OK, there is a problem with this. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is well stated. But actually, it is not very nice because because uh, the metric here depends on the on the system of generators because you are looking at the balls in the in the in the group. Uh, so this is not the house of the dimension of the space of left orders. This is mostly the the, the space of left orders when you look at the canonical system of generators, OK? OK, if you change the system of generators, the value of the, 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 the house of dimension may change, OK? But the fact that it is positive or not, or maybe infinite, doesn't change. So if this is zero for one, one system of generator, it, it will be zero for, for, for any other system of generators. So even this question, uh, the answer to this question is unknown. And what is, what is behind this question? So in order to get information about the house of dimension, what we need to get is information how close is one order from the other one. Okay, which means that how close means that maybe if I have two orders that are very th th that are equal on a ball of radius n, maybe this forces the order to be equal in a ball of very large ra radius, so that actually they are very close. Or maybe if if I have two orders in a ball of radius n, maybe immediately I can make them different in a ball of radius n plus one. OK? So there is, there is, a, there is a game there. And uh, I believe me, it's very hard to do explicit computation because it is very hard to say whether something, which I, I, I have a, uh, at hand, say, uh, an order defined on, on a ball, can be extended or not 
to an order on the full uh, free group. So there is a, a, a very nice uh, work by It's a kind of algorithm in order, in order to produce order on orders on the free group. There was a work by Smith, which was later by, corrected by Adam Clay because uh, there was some, a little mistake in the, in, the, in the proof, which was very quickly fixed. So, so the good reference now is, is that of Clay and, and Smith, which says how to build orders, how, how, how to distinguish orders of the free group. But uh, so this is still we don't know, OK? We would like to have a, so the, 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 the conjecture is that somehow it should be as larger uh, as possible, because we are dealing with the free group, and the free group uh, has no restriction at all. But uh, OK. This is, this is even interesting to put in a computer because, you know, you have, to, you have the free group. Let, let me draw a picture to, in order to illustrate this. So this is, this is F and this is G. So you have F here, G, G inverse, F inverse. And uh, well, there is, a, there, is a, there is a better way to think about Aleph order. Better way is to think about what is called the positive cone. The positive cone of a left order is the set of elements in the group that, that are larger than the identity. And what is nice with this is that gamma is the disjoint union of this positive cone, which is a semi-group. The set of negative elements, oh, the, the inverses of elements in this positive cone, and, and, and the identity. OK? And this is a semi-group. If you take two, two, two elements which are positive, h1 and h2, then if you multiply this, this equality on the left, you get h1, h2 is larger than h1. But h1 is larger than the identity, so you get that h1, h2 is in the positive column. OK? So it is better to think an order in that way, as a decomposition of the group into two parts, into two disjoint semi-groups. Uh, and so in order to define an order, the only thing that you, you need to do is take an element and decide whether it is positive or negative. But of course, you cannot do it randomly, because you have to respect the fact that it is a semi-group. So for instance, I can declare that f is positive and g is positive, or I can declare that Maybe f inverse is positive and g is positive. But let, let us suppose that f is positive and g is positive. In that case, immediately the, pro, the product of f and g has to be positive and the product of g f has to be positive. OK? The product of f inverse and g inverse has to be negative and, and so on. But what about f inverse g? OK, I didn't. I didn't uh, If I, if I declare that f and g are positive, I didn't fix the, 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 the sign of this element. OK? Maybe it is positive, maybe it is not. What, what, what can I do? Maybe I can add this element in the set of positive elements. Maybe I can add it in the set of negative elements. And maybe if I do this and I continue doing this, I will create an order. But sometimes things become much more complicated. Because some relations imply that actually if this element was positive and this other element was positive, then the product was positive. And in the product, there is some cancellation. So some element which has a smaller length had to be positive. So things cannot be randomly. And this is the difficulty of this question. Okay? And it's a very interesting question because it's kind of combinatorial question where you would like to, uh, to, to get enough information Maybe not the whole information of the pace of less orders, but at, at least enough information to, to answer this question. Now let me let me uh, 
give another question which is related to this. OK. So again, I will consider the space of left orders on the group. And uh, as I said before, the group itself acts on this space of left orders. So there is a natural action. So given an element f in gamma and an order on the group, there is another order, which is the action of this element on this order. OK, and the, the new order, let me de denote it f of this is the order whose positive con so that the set of, of, of positive elements are the conjugates of the set of positive elements of the original uh, uh, order. I think well, maybe I, I'm doing a mistake putting the minus here or minus here, but you can check whether this is the right definition or not, because one of the definitions will give, a, give you an action. So, so I just conjugate in the positive con, and I, and I, I, and I get a new, a new order. OK? So, so for this new order, Uh, let me call it uh, this way. So uh, 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 an element will be positive if only if uh, it is the conjugate by f of a positive element here. OK? So this gives you a very nice uh, action on the, of the group on this, on this space, which is somehow like a cantor, cantor space, but actually it's not always a cantor, a cantor set. And the question is how complicated can this action be? OK? And there is a nice example again concerning the free group. So this is an action by homeomorphism, actually, by very, very nice homeomorphism. And uh, the action of the free group on two generators in its space of left orders is transitive. Which means that it is, uh, it has dense orbits. So this is a theorem by, by my student, former student, Cristobal Rivas. But actually, it was somehow implicit in the, in the work of Stefan McLeary from the, from the 70s. The only thing is that uh, at that time, there was no definition of the space of left orders. So the, the work of McLeary was very combinatorial. But what he was doing, more or less, was showing this. So what does this mean? Well, this means that there is a, 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 a dense orbit means that there is a, an order on the free group that contains the information of every order on the free group. But the, the information, not the whole information, but the information on finite subsets. OK? Every finite collection of inequalities for an order has a copy in this order of uh, dense orbit. And to get this copy, you have to conjugate the order. And you will get this one. So the question now is, this is explicit question. So this is transitive, but uh, there, are, there are, so let me, let me, let me show you something. There, there are points that remain fixed. A, a fixed point for this is a point for which conjugating a, a, a a positive element that still gives a positive element, which means that the order is a by-order. It's invariant on the left and on the right. And there are many, many by-orders on the free group. So there are fixed points, but there are points for which the orbit is very, very complicated, and they cover the whole 
space, uh, well, the closure of the, of the orbit is the whole space. Okay, this is more or less the structure. Actually, there is, there is another closed subset which is invariant, but anyway. So the question is, can the action of the group for a, for a certain group in the space of left orders of, of itself can be minimal? And we would like to say, yes, it can be minimal. But uh, for that, we, we, we will need to, to, to build a very special group in which every order contains the information of every order. In particular, the group cannot be biorderable. Otherwise, there will be fixed points on the space of left orders. Okay, So that would be a kind of, of, uh, of monster, right? I see. Okay, something very, very, very. We are, but it's still left for the So the definition is every orbit distance. Every orbit distance. Every orbit is. Okay, not only well, when, when the, there is a one, one orbit which is dense, actually there are many orbits that are dense, not all, all the orbits. And we would like to have all the orbit dense. And uh, what? That's an open question. So, so at some moment of this theory, let me let me let me say something. So this theory of orderable group started developing in the the work of Dedekind and Holder and many people. It was very algebraic at the beginning. Then it became somehow combinatorial, then people who was studying things on co-dimension wall foliation notices that there was a relation between them. So it became topological, and now there are methods from geometric groups here inside, and methods from probability, and, uh, and so on. But at some moment, what was difficult in this, in this uh, theory was to construct examples, to build examples of left orderable groups uh, besides the obvious examples, I mean uh, the, 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 the abelian groups, the free group, uh, well, even the, the, the free group is, is not that obvious. But today the, there is a machinery to, to build new examples of uh, left orderable groups. We hope that this, uh, this in case the, the, the answer is, is, is positive, we hope uh, having the answer in, in the next years. But anyway, it is, it, is, it is not clear that the answer will be positive. Maybe there is some restriction for, for this action. So let me now uh, very quickly state another question, which is lineals conjecture. This was conjectured by Peter Lineal about 20 years ago. And it is still open. OK, uh, the question is the following. Suppose that gamma is left orderable and finitely generated. Uh, suppose that. So this is a question, not, not, not a statement. Suppose that there is no free subgroup inside gamma. And the question is whether there exists a group homomorphism from gamma into Z. OK. OK, and let me say that one of the motivation of this question is that it was known well, for many for many times it was known for for a small groups, for instance, well, this is more or less obvious for for a billion groups, then people prove it for for solvable groups. But actually, the answer is yes. 
in case you replace this property by amenability. So, so this is known to hold for gamma amenable. This is a remarkable uh, result with a remarkable proof, actually, by Dave Morris Witt about uh, 15 years ago. This was also conjectured by Peter Linnell. This was the, the original version of Linnell's conjecture. But I, I would like to add, uh, to stress here, that this was originally conjectured by Thurston. OK? And nobody noticed that Thurston conjectured this. OK? He has a remarkable paper, uh, which is called uh, in, in foliations, which is the generalization of Ribs of Stability Theorem. And if you read carefully, you will see that this conjecture is in there, in another language. So he, he says something like, suppose that you have a co-dimension one foliation, and suppose that the pi one of, the, of some leaf is, uh, is amenable, and you look at the, at the group of germs uh, about uh, uh, you look at the holonomy uh, about this, this, this manifold, then there should be some homomorphism into Z. It is written explicitly. And if you translate that, this is a, a period linear conjecture. It's a, it's a pity. Nobody noticed that. Uh, a couple of years, uh, uh, a couple of years ago, I read again the, the paper of Sorsen, which is really remarkable. And, uh, and uh, I noticed that. In, in one sentence, there was a linear conjecture. So let me just stress this, because I really love this. And why this is interesting? Uh, because uh, this is the relation that I, that I will uh, exploit in, the, in my second talk. When you, when you put some regularity, re recall that having a, a, a left order is equivalent to having an action on the real line. But when you put some regularity for the action on the real line, you can get much more information. OK, and Thorson proved the following. If gamma, oh, this is, oh, he proved more than this, but anyway, I will, I, I will state it this way. If gamma is finitely generated and gamma embeds into the group of C1 diffeomorphisms, then gamma uh, subjects into Z. Or actually, it's better to write this way. Gamma has a non-trivial homomorphism uh, a non-trivial homomorphism into the reals, if you wish. When you have this and you are finitely related, then you can you can project so that to get this. But actually into the reals with the with addition, so the the, the, the classical group structure. OK? And uh, well, let me just give the proof of this, because this is really brilliant. So I, I love this, this proof. This is one of my favorite proofs in mathematics, because this is so smart. So, so. OK, so uh, the proof is just uh, taking derivatives, of course, because you, 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 you have a group of different morphisms, you would like to take derivatives. So it, 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 there is an obvious homomorphism, which is take an element in the group, and you look at the derivative at the, at the say, at, uh, at the origin, and you look at the logarithm of this. And because of the chain rule, this is a group homomorphism, OK? Because of the chain rule. The chain rule says that the, the, the derivative of the composition, the products of the logarithm of the derivative is the sum of the logarithm. The logarithm of the derivative of the composition is the sum of the logarithm of the, of the derivatives. OK, but the problem is that this homomorphism may be trivial. This is the difficult case, of course. So it may happen that all maps in the, in the group are tangent to the identity. And when that happens, so suppose that uh, your maps are like a Taylor series. So 
every map is like a, a, x plus some coefficient here to the square plus some coefficient here to the, OK? And well, I am supposing that the first coefficient is 1. When you have maps for which the first coefficient is 1, the second coefficient becomes a group of homomorphism. If you do the composition, then the second co coefficient of the composition is the sum. So this number is a group homomorphism. OK, of course, it may happen that this number vanishes. But then you go to the, to the new number, and it becomes a group homomorphism and so on. And this argument works pretty well. This, this, this was prior to, 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 to Thurston. This is an argument by Hefliger, actually. But of course, the problem here is that here we are, we are supposing that there are Taylor series expansions. So it works pretty well in the, for, for, for analytic maps, but it doesn't work for, for finite differentiability. Actually, we, we are only in class C1. We, we are not allowed to take the second derivative. We are not allowed even to take this, which is weaker than taking the second derivative. OK, so the end of the proof of Thurston is an exercise. <laughs> How to produce something using only one derivative that, that gives you a group of homomorphism. And the idea, I will, I will say this way. This is the way I see it. So when you have the derivative, the derivative is like the change of, uh, of the length of the, of the near the, the, the origin of, of the intervals. OK. But instead of, of doing that, I will somehow I will take one of the generators, which, which does the, the maximal displacement, and I will look the change of the other elements with respect to this element. So I, somehow, I will renormalize the geometry about the origin in order to discover, th thanks to this renormalization, a, a derivative, something like a derivative. Okay? This is the idea of Thurston, which is really very, very brilliant. Okay? This is from 73. What I know is that at the beginning, people didn't understand what Thurston did, because it was so, 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 so clever, so smart. And people tried to understand what, what he did, and he reproved it using non-standard analysis. And there is, uh, there is another guy who took the proof using non-standard analysis, and he implemented that proof in a standard analysis. And that proof became the classical proof of Thurston's theorem, not Thurston's original one. So if you go into the book of, for instance, Candle and Conan Affiliations, the proof that appears is the standard version of the non-standard analysis version of the proof of Thurston. OK. OK. This is, this is another, another framework where you see that uh, this uh, Things appear, but in general, if you if you are not dealing with uh, derivatives, uh, uh, linens or conjecture is is open. And let me just say that to prove this here, in case of a linear group, the, the the role of the space of left order is really crucial. So what uh, Dave Morris considers is the action of the group on the space of left orders, and since this is a compact topological space or even metric space, and the group is amenable. There is an invariant probability measure for this action. And looking at the action and the invariant probability measure, he captures something that allows to, 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 to build a group homomorphism. It's really a brilliant proof. OK, but the answer for the general question of pyrolineal, when the group has no free subgroup, uh, at least for me, it's not clear. Uh, so. so. I think it's, it's a little risk to, to, to conjecture something like that is true. So, but producing free subgroup is not uh, it's not that easy. So there is a, a classical method which is called the ping pong ping pong uh, strategy. So you want to produce some dynamics like the north south dynamics of two different elements in pencil two R, and you would like to play this game inside the space of left orders, but this is really uh, uh, this seems to be very very difficult okay fourth question so again I will state it very quickly and then I will I will explain the, the, the issue here does there exist 
gamma finitely generated left orderable with a property which is very important in this uh, context, in any context, it is called cash dance property T. Okay, so property T is really a fundamental property uh, today in, in, in group theory, in dynamics, in representation theory, and so on. Let me just remind that uh, gamma has property T. Oh, there are many, many equivalent uh, formulations. Uh, one of the formulations is that if every action of gamma on a Hilbert space has a, a action, I mean isometric action, an action by isometries. So an action by isometries is the composition, is an action by maps which are compositions of rotations and translations. Okay, and the rotational part has to be a representation, a unitary representation. And the translation has to be a co-cycle with respect to the unitary representation. So it has a, a version uh, in terms of cohomology, but I prefer this version, which is more geometric. So every isometric action of gamma on a Hilbert space has a fixed point. OK? And examples of these are lattices in higher rank simple Lie groups. OK? And for this, there is a theorem which was proved uh, by, again, by Witt for certain lattices uh, about uh, 30 years ago, and which was complete very recently by Derwan and Hurtado in a remarkable work. So they proved that lattices in higher rank And simply groups are not left orderables. Okay? But the question of property T is different. I mean, it, it, it is really, really a, So there, there are much more structures here in, in, in lattices than, than property T. All these groups have property T, but they really have much more structure. And, and remind that Thurston says that if you take gamma, gamma inside diff of the interval, then gamma has a ha, gamma finitely generated, gamma group of homomorphism into Z. And Z, uh, of course, it has a translation action on the real line, so it, is, it doesn't have property T, so gamma uh, is not T. But this is imposing some regularity, OK? Here we are asking about just changing diff one by homeo, if you wish. It might seem very technical from that point of view, but Really, most what, 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 what we have discovered is that the most interesting group that act in this, in this framework only act by homeomorphisms, OK? And uh, they give a lot of, uh, say, uh, flexibility. And groups that act by diffeomorphisms are very rigid, actually. Well, this is, this is a consequence of the theorem of Thurston. So the first part is Thurston's theorem. The second is, a, is an easy consequence. And actually, you may ask also for uh, the same question for so being left orderable is equivalent to acting on the on the on the real line or on the interval. It's the same because we are in the continuous category. So uh, the theorem says that if gamma embeds into the group of diffeomorphism of the circle with some regularity, say C two, then gamma 
uh, and is infinite, then gamma is not t. This is a theorem. Of course, you, you, you have to impose this condition here because you may have finite groups. And finite groups have property t because it's very easy to, to build a fixed point for, for, for actions. OK, and actually, one can uh, prove this theorem with a slightly uh, lower regularity, but larger than C1. So even this is, is not known to be a theorem in class C1. OK, so this is a, this is, this is a question. This is an important question. And again, one of the problems here. So, so for me, the answer is not clear. So I think that most of the people think that the, the, the groups with property T shouldn't be left orderable. I don't know. This is what they, they, they talked uh, at least 20 years ago, because these this, this results here, and because this, at least for, of this theorem that was available at that time. But actually, there is a huge uh, uh, difference between this framework and Kaizen property T framework. And I think that, again, one of the problems with this theory is that it is difficult to build examples. But it might be the case that the, the, there are examples of groups with property T which are left orderable. OK, let me just say that there is a, a very uh, concrete example of a group which is very close to have property T. OK? It has what is called the, the relative property T. So the relative property T means that there is a group and there is a subgroup such that every action of, the, of gamma on a Hilbert space has a point uh, or a vector fixed by, by the smaller subgroup. So uh, having property t is the same as having pro relative property t for h equal to gamma. Okay. And, uh, and there is a prototype of group with property, relative property t. So uh, property T, uh, an example of group of property T is SL3C. Uh, a, a, a prototype of this is SL2C, semi-direct product with C2. OK? So every action of this group has a vector which is fixed by this sample. This is classical. And what is nice is that this group, I will denote it by, by gamma, gamma r, the, the, the example with the relative property t. So, uh, so this is a fact. Gamma r is a subgroup of the group of homeomorphism of the circle. One can build a similar example for homeomorphism of the Line because inside here there is a free subgroup which is finite index. And if you take the, 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 the semi-dary product with C2, you get something which is finite index and which still has uh, relative property T and which acts on the. But let me just concentrate on this case. So this is naturally a group of homeomorphism of the circle. And this is almost T because it has this relative property. Okay? And why this is natural? Because you see, SL2C acts on S1. Okay? It's a natural action of SL2C on S1. And then uh, what we do is to play what is called the Danjua, the Danjua game, the Danjua, the Danjua blow up. Although the, the name is I think it's badly chosen but because Poincaré already knew how to do this. So you take an orbit for the action. This gives you a, a countable number of points. And you replace each of these points by an interval. OK? 
And the thing that you have to impose is that the total sum of the, uh, of the length of this interval is finite, so that you get another interval. It's, everything is at a topological level, uh, so there is no issue of differentiability here. This is why I say this is, this is a, an example by Poincaré, not by Danjoa. Danjoa, what he did is to do these kind of things, keeping at least some um, C1 regularity. Okay, and, and what we will do is that, well, uh, inside these intervals, I will put the action of C2. Okay, and one way to do that is to take, I take a, a two independent times of a vector field, which lives on, on Okay, so I take a vector field and I take F, so I will denote the generators of this by F and G. F will be time one map and G will be say time uh, pi map. So just, I just need a, an irrational number. Okay. And this gives me an action of C2 on one interval. And then in order to get an action of this group, I have to uh, extend this action in a equivariant way so that the action of F here and G here will be, well, I conjugate by the action cell to Z, then I, I linear action group here and I change the on the action of the matrix SL to Z or 1P, 1 pi, okay? And I do this in an equivalent way. The only thing that I, I, I need to take care is that the orbit that I am exploding has a free orbit for the action of to Z. That there is no contradiction in the definition. But this, this gives an action, okay? If you think a little bit, this is an action. This is a topological, and uh, this gives an example of a that acts that somehow almost has a quantity. So this is why I think this question is also very, uh, it is clear to me what, what is the answer because there is an almost, almost example. Let me just finish by saying that, okay, this is at a topological level, but at this group, uh, has no, Non-trivial, of course. Act, uh, uh, no, this action, say, has no faithful action. By C one diffeomorphisms. Okay. Which is a period of this theorem. How proof of these two theorems are very different. Okay? And the thing that I will do in the exploring the second talk. So, really, when you change differentiability, things change a lot. So, it is not the same to look at C2 derivative and C1 derivative. They are totally different words. Okay? And I will try to give some sight on that, but th this is going to be for my second talk. Okay? Okay, I'm just in time, so thank you very much. <laughs>